Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We are going to take a look at creating these vector swirling rainbows using Adobe Illustrator. This is just a quick piece I threw together for this very cool Alan Jackson song. I encourage you to check it out. It's called Chasing That Neon Rainbow. Pretty cool song, but that's not the point of this video. We're going to take a look at creating these rainbows. Now these rainbows can be used in all sorts of artwork. They can be used in logos, they can be used in retro style art, they can be used in grunge style art. They're very useful in all sorts of cool different uh, different types of cool applications. That's how I meant to phrase that. And uh, this is just one of them here. And we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator to create these. So the possibilities are really endless. You can use them in Flash, you can use them in Photoshop, you can use them in Illustrator, you can use them everywhere. And they're vector, so you can scale them up, you can scale them down, you can scale them any which way you want. And they remain nice and crisp and strong and vector. So it's really great. All right, I'm going to hop over to Illustrator, and here we're going to set up a new file. Go File New. And we're going to just make this 640 by 480. That would make that landscape orientation. And you can give it a name. We can just call it uh, Swirling Rain B. Hit OK. And I am going to collapse this dock and just move this over. All right, here's our boundary box to bring this dock back up. All right, we've got layer one here, and we're just going to rename this ellipse base. Hit OK. We're going to start out by, well, creating an ellipse. So click and hold on the rectangle tool until the flyout menu pops up and choose the ellipse tool. Now this is pretty important here. Number one, double click, or not double click, just single click on your foreground or your fill, your fill color, not foreground color, fill color and uh, set it to none. That would be hitting that little slash button. So we only have a stroke, that's all we want. Now with the ellipse tool, just click anywhere on stage once. And we want to create a specific sized ellipse. In this case, 100 by 100. Now there's a reason we're creating this 100 by 100. And I suggest that you do create your ellipse if you're creating it in increments of 10 because that's going to be important in just a minute. So maybe for the first time going through this, if you need a larger sized rainbow, first create it at 100 so you kind of know the ropes of what you're doing. So we're going to go 100 by 100, so we've got a perfect circle. Hit OK. And what do you know? We've got a 100 pixel by 100 pixel circle that appears, and it is only a black stroke with none fill circle. What we need to do is grab the white arrow, which is the direct selection tool. Hotkey is A. Now click and drag a selection over just this very bottom portion of the circle. What we just did was selected that single anchor point down there on the bottom. See, we can drag that anchor point now. Just delete that anchor point. Hit delete. There you go. We're left with a semicircle. Very nice. It's exactly what we want. I want you to select that semicircle. Go edit, copy, edit, paste in front. So we've got an exact copy of this circle, or semicircle, excuse me, sitting right on top of this circle. If we look in the layers palette, you can see that we have two paths, one on the bottom, one on the top. We're going to select the one on top, and we're going to go edit, or object, excuse me, transform, reflect. And we're going to reflect this along the horizontal axis. You can preview that, and you can see it's just flipping it from top to bottom. Hit OK. Now, because this circle was 100 by 100, the semicircle, or the radius of the circle now, is 50. So if we hold down the shift key and nudge with the arrow keys, that moves our semicircle in increments of 10. So I can basically recreate this full circle by nudging this down using the shift key and my down arrow key. Hit that five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Deselect and we've got a perfect circle again, except this time it's split in half. So in order to move it over, I'm going to move using shift and my right arrow key 10 times. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now check that out. It looks like a perfect S curve. I'm going to zoom in on it using my zoom tool. Hit A for that white arrow or the direct selection tool. And I'm going to drag a selection over the area where both paths would join. Now I'm going to go object, path, join. Because these two points aren't joined yet, I get the join options dialog. I'm just going to choose corner. And it just basically merges those two anchor points. So now if I select this, it is just one whole path. Very nice. All right, I'm going to duplicate this path. Edit, 
copy, edit, paste in front, and I'm going to nudge it to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to select the whole thing and just move it over. I'm not going to merge those two together yet because I want to create this again. Go Command or Control C to copy it, Command or Control F to paste it in front. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And there we go. We've got this nicely lined up. Grab the white arrow tool. That is hotkey A. Select the place where the first two S curves join and go Object, Path, Join. Choose Corner. And do the same over here. Make sure you grab both Object, Path, Join. Corner again. And now this is just one smooth flowing path. So you might think, hey, great, I've got my nice little S curve. I can just create my rainbow. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it in front, which essentially pastes it back in place. And I'm just going to nudge it up. Okay, so I nudge it up a little bit. The problem is, instead of getting that nice rainbow look, okay, let me flip over to Photoshop. You can see how this rainbow, all of the bands are equal, equidistant from each other. Well, hop back over to Illustrator. That is not the case here. So we've got some serious editing we would need to do this path in order to make that happen. So I'm going to delete this top path. Select it, the delete key, just like that. Now, the way that this is done is actually pretty easy. The first thing we need to do is select this path, and I'm going to increase the stroke weight to about three points. Makes it easier to see. Now, if we think rainbow, we think Roy G. Biv. So G, green, is the middle color of a rainbow. So I'm going to give this a uh, pretty bright green. Like that is fine. I can actually increase the weight a little more, although I'm going to leave it at three just for now, just because three is what uh, I want to use. I'm going to select this path now. And right now, it is a stroked path. We need to convert this stroke to a fill. And the way we can do that is by going Object, Expand. Now, there is no fill on this object, so we are not going to expand the fill. If we expand the fill, it's going to give us an extra path. We don't want to do that. We just want to expand this stroke and convert this stroke to a fill. Hit OK. And you can see that this is now a nice filled path. Notice here, it is a fill color now, not a stroke color. That's going to be very useful for our next step. So check this out. Select this path, go Object, Path, Offset Path. And we're going to offset this path by 4 pixels. Remember, our stroke weight is 3, so we're going to offset it by 4. Hit Preview, and look at what it's doing. It's basically doubling the thickness of our path by 4 pixels on either side. So hit OK, and let's zoom in and check to see what's, what's happened here. Basically, we still have our original path running down the middle here, which we want to keep. We want that to be green. But we also have this out here, which is very interesting. What I want to do is switch this from being a green filled object to being a green stroked object. All right, now it looks like we have the very early stages or the very early makings of a rainbow. Now I switch the fill of the, this entire group here. Notice it's all in a group in my layers panel to have a green stroke. So I want to select this layer whoops, on top or the path here on top and set that back to having a green fill because that is our solid green center. Now grab the direct selection tool and select the very end point or the very end cap of the new set of paths, the paths that are going to the outside of this green path in the center. And you're going to notice that it is four anchor points down there. If we delete those four anchor points, so I'm going to select them by just drawing out a selection over them using the direct selection tool and hit the delete key, we now have two stroked paths that line up perfectly with the end of our center stroke. So we're going to do the same thing over on this side. We're going to select those four end points and delete them. Now watch this. Well, number one thing I'm going to do is use my selection tool, select this whole thing, and right click and hit ungroup. So I can just select any one of these paths individually. And I'm going to increase the stroke weight to three points. And look at what it does. Check it out. Now we have three bands of our seven band rainbow. So I'm going to select this here. And uh, just before green, coming down from the top, we would have a yellow. So I'm going to hit stroke and uh, convert this to a nice yellow, just like that. And right after the green, we have blue. So I'm going to convert this to a uh, nice blue here. So there we go. So we've got yellow, green, blue for the very inner bands of our rainbow. Let's select the yellow band here. And uh, we need to expand this. So go Object Expand. We're not going to expand that fill, only the stroke. Because remember, this is only a stroke now. Because we stroked that offset path. Hit OK. And this is now 
a solid filled shape ready to be offset. So go object, path, offset path. We're going to offset it by four, just hit OK. And now we want to right click on it and ungroup it from the get go. And we're going to zoom in on it now. I'm going to select the bigger shape and just stroke it. So swap the fill and stroke. And I'm going to use my direct selection tool to select that end cap, delete that end cap, holding on the space bar to get my hand tool. I'm just pulling across the screen and use my direct selection tool over here, delete that end cap. Now, notice there are two paths. We've got an extra path hiding underneath the green. So click around in your layers palette and there it is. It's this path right here. So we can just select him and delete him just like that. Select this path, increase the stroke weight to three and we're ready to color this guy orange. Just like that. Back up and we're going to go object. Pan, uh, oops, object expand. We don't want to expand to fill. Just a stroke, hit OK. And now we can select that orange, object, path, offset path, hit OK. And now we're going to zoom in on this guy again. First thing you do, ungroup it. Select the larger path and swap the fill and strokes. We just have our outline now. Use that direct selection tool to delete the end cap. Hold down the space bar to switch to the hand tool. Pull your way across the screen. Delete the other end cap, just like that. Select the lower of the two paths, which will be the path that you need to delete. Okay, you can see the two paths are stacked here in the layers panel. Deselect the top one, just holding the bottom one. To delete key to get rid of it. Select that path on top, and we're going to make this a nice red and increase the stroke weight to three. So there we go. We've got red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Now you would come down here to the blue path and repeat all those steps to get the indigo and violet bands. And I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to take care of that right now, and then I will show you how to save this out and get it into Photoshop. Okay, I got that finished up, and here we go. We got our finished rainbow, and it is all on separate paths right now. It's all under the same layer. But the problem is we can just select one individual path, and you know we can select it and whoops, throw, dragged it up there. And now, now our rainbow looks all weird. Undo that. I'm going to select all of the bands of these rainbows or this rainbow, excuse me, and go object, group. Now we can just click anywhere on the rainbow and it selects the whole thing. I am going to rotate this to being on an angle, just like that, and I'm gonna save it. So I'm gonna go control, shift, or command, shift, S. So just like that, and up pops a dialog box. You can see a rainbow I made earlier is right in there. And here I'm just saving it. The format is an Adobe Illustrator file. I'm just gonna save as. Hit OK. And there we go. We have saved that. Now we need to get it over into Photoshop. So let me hop over to Bridge. Command Alt O again, uh, just like the shortcut. That's the shortcut to get to Bridge from pretty much all the Adobe Creative Suite 3 applications. And uh, here I am going to select this swirling rainbow and I'm going to go File, Place in Photoshop. And here it's going to say, Would you like to place this? I'm going to hit OK. And here it is. Now, because this is just a smart object, let me hit, well, I can't hit tab now to bring up my dialogs, but because this is a smart object, I can just shift it as big as I want and it, it's still vector. So I can rotate it. I can scale it really super small. I can scale it really super big. I can do really anything I want with it. And then when I hit enter, it rasterizes it. But I can always double click it. And because it's a smart object, take it back into Illustrator and edit it. So. That is how you take it from Illustrator into Photoshop and a little bit of masking, a little bit of maybe blending, a little bit of painting, some blend modes, blurring, things like that. You can really make yourself a nice composition and certainly using a rainbow like this can add some color, some zest, some life to a somewhat lifeless piece of art that you're working on. So that's how you do it. That's how you create those in uh, Adobe Illustrator and I certainly hope you've learned something in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.